Uh, I am what the scientists call a homosexual. <laughs> I'm not here to recruit, don't worry. <laughs> but I am here to warn you about the homosexual agenda. Yes. It is out there, folks. I don't watch TV anymore because of it, especially cable television, because cable television really gears itself now at three major demographics. And that's fashion-minded queers, dance-loving queers, and ice road trucking queers. I'm a rare mile on queer, that's why I watch the vacation. I feel the need to tell you this up front that I'm gay, because uh, sometimes people don't believe me. True story, I was doing this show, and a woman comes up to me after that show, and she's like, you know what, Will? I don't buy it. I don't buy that you're gay. Like I'm doing it for the parking spaces. She's like, you don't really read as gay. And to that I said the only thing I could say. I was like, well, you've never seen me read. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> the butler did it. It was a mystery. I'm kidding, guys. I don't read. Um, I loved uh, I loved pro wrestling growing up. That was the thing that I really geeked on. I loved pro wrestling as a kid. And after I came out, which was a little bit later in life, I would tell people I like pro wrestling, and I would get the same reaction a lot. They're like, oh, that makes sense, and they kind of wink, and they nudge. It's like, what the hell's that about? They're like, you know, pro wrestling, it's homoerotic. No, <laughs> no, 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 listen. Two dudes kissing. That's homoerotic. Greco-Roman wrestling. I'll give you that, that's fucking homoerotic. But one dude pile-driving another dude into a mat, well, that's just fucking sexy. <laughs> that's a good Friday night. <laughs> Gives me something to smack down. Um, oh, that was great. I had a great conversation with a, a comedian friend of mine about pro wrestling. And uh, it prompted him to say this at the end. He goes, you know what, Will? You're like the coolest gay guy I've ever met. And uh, I felt really good about that. Like, deep down, the cockles of my heart felt really good. And then I was driving home, and I was like, wait a minute. Why do you have to throw that caveat in there? Like, hey, you're the coolest gay guy I've ever met. That's basically him saying, hey, for a gay guy, you know a passable amount of sports. Or for a straight man, you have a tolerable amount of gay sex. <laughs> like, just enough. <laughs> you ever had it? I'm not, I'm, I'm really, I'm not a cool gay guy. I'm not even a cool guy. I'll prove that right now by mentioning Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> you guys know who Ernest Borgnine is? Yeah. 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 Right, if you don't know, he's an older actor. He's a 90 year old actor. He's on 50 sitcom television. But uh, true story, you, you can look it up on YouTube. He recently was on a morning talk show. And uh, they asked Ernest this question. They go, Ernest, for 90 years old, you look so young and healthy and good spirits. How do you do it? And he leans in and nowhere of lie goes, I masturbate a lot. <laughs> now I tell you this not because I think you should know about Ernest Borgnine. I tell you this because I'm actually 57 years old. <laughs> I masturbate a lot. <laughs> You've tried that. That's... <laughs> I, uh, I told you guys that I, I came out late in life, and that's, uh, that's a true thing about me. And a lot of people ask me about that time, like, Will, it must have been a real tumultuous time in your life, a real hard time for you. And uh, it really wasn't. And uh, here's the measure of how easy I had it. My father was the last person I told. It's a late night conversation. I you know, put it off, I put it off. And uh, I finally tell him, I finally say the words. And this is what he says verbatim, I swear to God, he goes, Oh, thank God, I thought you were going to ask me for money. <laughs> Which isn't an accurate, because being gay is super expensive. Half shirts don't buy themselves, you know? You would think half the shirt, half the price, but it's not. It's full price. It's, it's a fucking racket. It's ridiculous. I, uh, I recently moved. Um, 
I moved in with my, uh, my, my boyfriend, uh, who's actually now my fiance. Uh, trouble with the, the transition, so uh, I just call him my fiance. <laughs> but we moved, we moved to like a kind of an old school area. The, 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 the mentality is a little, little old school. And uh, case in point, we were, we just moved and we were standing on our front porch with, uh, with our landlady. And uh, an old lady across the way, a neighbor, comes over and she, uh, she brings us flowers. Nice neighborly gesture. Um, she hands us the flowers, and uh, our landlady speaks up and goes, uh, Now, you guys, put those in a vase. You do have a vase, right? And the old lady leans in and goes, Oh, I bet you guys have a lot of vases. <laughs> what the fuck is that shit? That's the most offensive thing anyone's ever said to us. <laughs> so, so we just said the only thing uh, we could say. I was like, no, actually, we have a lot of vases. <laughs> Can't do it right. Great thing about tonight's show is you can say whatever you want. And, uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, that was not the case. I was doing a show a couple months ago, and uh, the booker, where all the comedians in the back, was like, listen up, guys. This is for you, Will. Tonight, you can't say the N-word or the faggot word. <laughs> I get it, but it begs the question, what exactly is the faggot word? Because I feel like it's doing pretty good on its own, you know? Did some research for you guys, actually words derived from faggot. There's, uh, there's faggotry, which is the general act of being a faggot. Or a plant that bears fruit. There's faggotonometry, which is the mathematics of being gay. And there's faggot to Christian. And that's being gay. But with some mystery. Hey, good night, everyone. We'll smoke.